We all, each and every one of us, have preferences. Many of these preferences are innocuous. We like Harvard over Yale, the Red Sox over Yankees. But when these preferences become about advantaged and disadvantaged groups in society, these preferences transform into much more problematic bias. I'm a scholar in psychology. And for the past five years, and hopefully for the rest of my life, I have made it my mission to understand the nature of this bias. What is it? Where does it come from? But most importantly, can it be changed? The question of change in our bias has been at the center of the field of psychology for decades. And over this time, we've documented clear evidence that people can and do change what they think and feel about other groups. For instance, as recently as 1988, a full 77% of Americans disapproved of same-sex marriage. Today, the majority approve, and same-sex marriage is a legal and protected right across the United States. And it's not just attitudes about sexual orientation that have changed. In my own research, using data from more than 7.8 million data points of explicit bias collected continuously minute by minute since 2007, I found that explicit bias has decreased consistently over the past 14 years for explicit biases about body weight, age, disability, sexuality, race, and skin tone. But the story of change doesn't end here. In psychology, we make a distinction between two types of bias. On the one hand, we have the types of bias that I've just been talking about are explicit biases that can be measured through surveys and self-reports. But on the other hand, we have a type of bias that rests under the surface of the mind, less conscious and less controllable, our implicit biases. Now, our implicit biases can't be measured from surveys and self-reports. Instead, we rely on reaction time or speed to measure the automatic associations between concepts and mind. For instance, for most of you, you're going to be fast to associate the concepts Harvard and good and Yale and bad, and much faster than you are going to be to associate the reverse concepts. And that's because Harvard and good are automatically associated in your mind. Now, intuitively, you can see that these automatic associations, these implicit biases, are difficult to control. And in fact, for a long time in psychology, we thought that implicit bias could not change. When it was first introduced, it was called a cognitive monster, a kind of untamable, immutable beast that rested beneath the surface of the mind. My goal has been to provide the first comprehensive test of this long-standing assumption. And to ask again, can implicit bias change? To answer this question, I turn back to my massive data set of 7.8 million data points, where we also collected tests of implicit bias. And here, the storyline gets exciting. First, far from being a cognitive monster, I find that implicit bias has changed. Most notably, implicit bias about sexual orientation has decreased over the past 14 years by a whopping 64%. And not only that, it's forecast to continue changing and to reach no bias or neutrality within just one and a half years. It's not only implicit sexuality bias that's changing, implicit bias about race and skin tone have also decreased over the past 14 years by 25%. But the results are not all so rosy. Implicit bias about age and disability haven't changed at all over the past decade. And the forecasts here say that it could take more than 150 years for these attitudes to ever touch neutrality. But perhaps the most problematic trend that we observed in our data was implicit body weight attitudes, which have increased in bias over the past decades. Now this diversity of patterns with some biases increasing, some remaining stable, and some decreasing prompts many provocative questions for me, for other researchers, and for our world. But first amongst those questions, is why? Why are these biases changing? What is it about our society or our individual minds that allow for these transformations? To answer this question, I actually start by answering a slightly different question of who is changing. And that is because answering the question who can tell us whether the forces of change are coming from just isolated pockets of our society or whether the forces of change are truly widespread across people and places. 
And from our more than 7.8 million data points, I find that change is indeed impressively widespread across people and places. That is generally regardless of race, religion, education, even age or politics, I find that most groups are changing in the same direction at similar rates. And this tells us that those forces of change are coming from widespread cross-cutting social events. Social movements like Black Lives Matter or hashtag Me Too, federal legislation of same-sex marriage, or mainstream media representation. My new research is telling us that these are the kinds of social events that are prompting transformations not only in our explicit conscious values, but also in that cognitive monster of implicit bias. We know now that even implicit bias can change. And this conclusion is important because in a time that holds both the potential for great reckoning as well as the risk of great hostility, it is our responsibility to do the change to make our attitudes and our biases change in the direction of equity and social progress. Knowing now that change is possible, we must make that change happen.